Mm. Well, praise the Lord this morning as I come to you again. I know I haven't been on here a couple of days. I think it's a couple of, maybe one day. Anyway, as I was looking at the news and Mm. about this thing that happened in Oklahoma where I was born where I was raised in Oklahoma these three young men just sitting on a porch doing nothing being bored doing nothing constructive and they see this other young man go jogging down the street in front of them minding his own business nice young man from Australia So these other three go, hmm, they get this idea, let's just go out and kill somebody. I'm bored. Let's do something, you know. Can't think of anything constructive to do, like going out and maybe mowing an elderly person's yard. Or, you know, help a mom or dad around the house or whatever constructive. No, they decided to do something destructive. Go out and kill a human being. Take it. Take a human being's life for the thrill of it. And of course you got all these psychiatrists running around trying to figure out what was wrong with these boys that would do that? Why? Uh, what is going on with this world today? We see the injustice in a lot of things. Egypt, they're destroying each other. The country's destroying itself. Syria and Damascus and them, destroying themselves. Human life is of no value anymore. Human life is no more than just an animal. If we're bored, go out and destroy somebody. It's, it's not important. Just go out and kill them. And society's going, why? Why is this happening? Why, what's going wrong? One, let me tell you what's going wrong. We've taken God out of everything. Everything. We've taken it out of school. Don't pray. Can't read the Bible. Can't, can't teach the moral compass of the scriptures anymore even though the Ten Commandments lays them out I shall not kill, I shall not steal, I shall not commit adultery you know it, it, it lays it right out for us the moral compass let's go over in and let me read the moral compass that was laid out let's go to Exodus chapter 20 Verse 1, And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And when we are saved and we get our heart to Yeshua HaMashiach, we come out of the bondage of this world. We're released from the bondage of this world. Verse 3, Thou shalt have no other gods before me, People have many gods now before them. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or earth beneath or that the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thy, thyself to them nor serve them for I am the Lord thy God and a jealous God visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And 
showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord shall have, hold him guiltless that take shall not hold him guiltless taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The churches are dying. They're falling apart because the moral compass is no longer taught in churches even. Six days shall thou labor and do thy work, but on the Sabbath is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughters, thy manservants, nor thy maidservants, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For six days the Lord made heaven and earth and the sea and all in them is and rested for the seventh day. Wherefore God blessed the Sabbath day and honored it. Now I am a Sabbath day keeper, so I can truly keep the Sabbath day. But it doesn't matter. Sunday churches are not preaching the moral compass anymore. They're not teaching this word. Let's go on. Honor thy father and thy mother, that the days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God give thee. They have no, you have no longer any, any respect or honor to their family, to their fathers and mothers. And sometimes some of the things that their fathers and mothers do really doesn't deserve respect. But that's not what the scripture says. You're supposed to honor them anyway. If they're ruthless, you're supposed to honor them. Not agree with what they do and not go along with what they do, but honor them. Thou shalt not kill. Oh, what did those boys do to that young man? Killed him. Is it taught in school anymore? No. Not by scripture, not by the law of God. No, it's not. Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's no longer taught. Oh, it's okay to go out and have a relationship with before you get married. It's all right if if you want to go out and have an affair. It's all right if you have a homosexual relationship. Everything is okay. But yet, we see, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And do you know how many people will literally go in court and bear face lie and bear false witness? God is looking. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his maid, manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, or his ass, or anything that is thy neighbor's. Very simple. Very to the point of a moral compass that has literally been taken out of our schools, out of our family's teaching and daily life. Parents no longer want to take the time out to supervise their children properly. Now I'm not saying all parents are like this. I Don't get me wrong. I'm not clumping all parents in one catalog. I'm saying there are many out there that no longer supervise their children in the proper way. They just let them hang out together, do whatever they want to do, as long as they're not interfering with their life. Oh, go out and be with the other kids. Go out and see Johnny or Sally or Susie or whatever. Just, you know, go on. Because mom and dad has got too much stuff to, to do and think about. And there are things that they want to do and they want to... Go on, kids. Get out of our face. You know, when we have children, we have a responsibility to raise them in the proper and right way. We have a responsibility to teach them the moral codes and moral compass 
that they need to learn to live by and walk by. You know, do good unto others. Help those that are in need. Be kind, gentle, loving, respectful. Doesn't hurt to say yes ma'am, no ma'am. They don't even do that nowadays, biggest part of them. Even in this small little town, we have room, roaming groups of kids that just roam from one place to another, one house to another, drinking and drugging. And half the time, the parents don't know where they are, who they're hanging out with, what homes they're going to, to party down in. Sometimes these kids I have seen will be gone all night, all day. Finally, go home after they sober up. Some of them don't even sober up. They go home drunk, high. Parents don't care. Go, 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 go to bed. We're losing the moral compass of teaching to our youth. So why wouldn't they be sitting oh, out there on the porch? Just sitting there, bored, going, hmm, what should we do next? Hmm. And they see this man come jogging by and they go, wow, why don't we go out and kill some people today? See, this man that they shot and killed was only the first. They had planned on going and killing some more. I mean, they got a site on Facebook, and that's what they said. And, and, and they have no shame about it. They'll publicize it on a, a format out to the whole world, like Facebook. And the psychiatrists say, what's going on? What are we doing wrong? Well, I'm telling you what you're doing wrong. You took God out of school because that, <clears throat> that there's some people that don't want to believe in God, don't believe there's a God, and don't want their children to be taught God. Okay. When that happens, you drag all of everybody's kids into the obisk. It's time for America to take back America, the schools, and take back the schools, put the Bible back into the schools, start teaching morality in the most biblical way that even our laws are founded on. Because now these kids are going in jail. They're going to be tried for first degree murder. And well, sh they should be. You know, our, the morals at my age, when I was in my teenage years, was taught not only in school, but at home. I mean, my dad and mom was strict. They supervised everything I did. They knew where I was going. They knew what time I would, you know, I would be home because they'd give me a curfew and say, you be home at this certain time. I didn't get to run free and do whatever I wanted to do. I mean... I lived on a ranch. I had a horse. I'd ride over to my girlfriend's house and we'd go riding and, and we'd enjoy ourselves. But we were taught the moral compass that when we was bored, we wouldn't go out and kill a human being. We knew that was wrong. We knew it was wrong. We was taught that it was wrong. To kill another human being was wrong. Not only was it a sin, but it was wrong in the eyes of society. You just didn't do that. You were taught that in school and in home. 
And, you know, we knew the consequences of it because we were taught the consequences of it. Oh, these kids hear stuff, but you know what? It doesn't register because you're not, they're not taught daily in school and at home. Parents, if you turn your kids loose and go, Oh, I trust them. They know right from wrong. Do they? Is that what those three kids, parents, is thinking? I taught them right from wrong. Did you? Did your schools teach them from right from wrong? That you just don't get bored one day and, and kill somebody? If you get bored, you get up and do something constructive. That will not only benefit yourself, but be, maybe benefit other people. And you know what? When you do that, you may get applauded. Congratulated. Praised. But when you do things destructive, you're not going to get applauded or praised. You're going to be looked at as some malcontent. Some distorted human being with a distorted mind. Maybe that's what kids care about. They don't care that they're praised for doing good. They like being praised for doing bad. And you wonder why America is under judgment and the world is under judgment and God is judging them. Because we have lost the values of God and who He is and why He sent His Son to die for us on the cross. To think that God so loved the world that He sent His own Son down here to pay that price, that sacrificial price, that we would have life eternal. We no longer teach that. It should be the very foundations of everybody's home, teaching the morals, teaching how God really loves us, but He has set a compass before us of what we can and can't do. And as long as we got that compass, the Bible and the Word before us, and we're fixated on it, and we're going to the right direction, walking the right path. And the minute we start getting off of it, we see that compass moving in the wrong direction. We register in our mind and we bring ourselves back under control. See, we have to teach our children self-control and who we're willing to listen to. My dad always said, don't be the dog, the tail of the pack. Be the leader. Be the head. Lead them right in the right direction, Barbara. And this is what his advice for school. If you see anyone doing something that they shouldn't be doing, that is going against God's commandments, don't do it. Walk away from them. Let them know, I, I can't do this. This is not what God wants me to do. And you know, I could do that my my time in my school. But nowadays, if a child would say that, they could be in trouble for even saying, God. Well, you know what you young people can do? You can look at them and say, no, I don't do that. I go by a different moral than that. Meaning God's moral, not the world's moral. But I see three young men, unsupervised, not giving some kind of jobs and, and duties to do to keep their mind occupied. Sometimes parents have to do that to keep their kids' mind occupied. Like, 
Okay, Johnny, go in there and sweep the back porch, mow the lawn, rake the leaves, do, you know, keeping them occupied doing something. Because if you don't keep them occupied doing something in the right, correct way, then they're going to go out, sit on a porch, talk together, and in their delusional mind, decide to take people's lives as a thrill of doing something thrill. Now, back in my days, we had people like that, but they wouldn't kill humans. They would go out and kill animals, which is, in my point of view, is just as bad because they're killing for a thrill killer, but they happen to kill animals, not human beings. And most parents then would find, if they caught them doing that, they would take a strap to their seat in, and they quickly learn, you didn't do that. You just didn't do that. That's cruel. And you don't do that. Unless it's something that you're going to kill to bring to the house, to skin, to cook up and eat, you don't kill it. That's the way it was with me and my dad when he raised me. Because I'd go hunting. But I was taught, you never kill for pleasure or a thrill. If you want to eat it, kill it, bring it home, you skin it out, you clean it, you cut it up, you take care of the meat, and mom will cook it for you. That's how he would rule it. And I didn't go out doing that every day because I was always busy doing something else. In the summer, I was helping cut hay and haul hay to the barn and, and stack it and get it ready for winter. I worked in the garden, helping the garden grow, and Mama would can, and, and in the fall, we would kill a hog or or, or a, some beef, so we'd have meat through the winter. It was always busy keeping my mind occupied. And when I wasn't busy, I was reading the scriptures. And a lot of kids were like me back in those days. We're talking back in to the early 50s, okay? Where a family was a family and taught the moral compasses of right and wrong. America's in bad shape, people. The world is in bad shape. People don't mind killing other people. They don't look on them as human beings. Those three young men, when they shot that young man, they weren't looking on him as a human being. If they were really looking at him with, as a human being, they wouldn't have killed him. But to them, it was a thrill. It was a game. And a lot of things that's we see in our movies nowadays, our video games, has desensitized people, not only children, but it's bad for children because they're growing and their minds are developing, but there's adults that have that same attitude. They lose their moral compass. They lose their ability to look at people as truly human beings not just objects out there to do what you want to do with. That's the reason why people can go to court, even taking their friends to court, and bareface lie without any conscience. 
They could go out and take a human being and kill a human being without any conscience. The moral of this world is dying and almost dead. Once it totally dies, then chaos happens. Chaos in the worst form. That's the reason why in the scriptures it talks about in the last days it will get so bad there's hardly any human beings will be left on this planet earth. Because everyone has lost the moral compass of who human beings are. That's why Hitler was able to kill the Jews and all the other people that he put in. And it wasn't just Jews. Homosexuals went in too. If you were of the wrong color, black, you went into concentration camps. Because Hitler had turned Germany to the point they no longer looked at human beings as human beings, but pigs, castaway things. They're no longer human. They're dung. They're just, ugh. They're, they're to be destroyed, exterminated, got rid of. They're no good for anything. They're no longer human. I mean, would you to call them pigs? When you desensitize people's way of thinking about human life, they don't care. That's, that's why those three young men did what they did. They did not look at that young man as a human being. Just an object to kill and get a thrill out of killing. Egypt's going and killing brother against brother because they no longer look at each other as human beings. They look at them as the enemy, nothing, worthless, to be exterminated and got rid of. That's the way it is in Damascus. The Middle East is growing badly about that. You're going to see more stuff happen over there. A few nukes loose. You know, it's no big thing. They're pigs. They're no they're, they're no good. They need to be destroyed and wiped off the face of the earth. And it's going to grow worse here in the United States with our youth because we have lost the capability of teaching our children the precious, preciousness of life. That gift of life that was developed in a mother's womb, that was growing and developing and living and breathing and moving, even sucking its thumb. Go kill it. Desensitization, because it's nothing. It's just a piece of meat. Well, I've never seen a piece of meat get up off of my plate and breathe and suck its thumb and kick its little feet and stuff. I've never seen that yet. Of course, it freaked me out if I did, but <laughs> I'm just saying, I've never, I eat meat, okay, and I've never seen a piece of meat move. Like a baby in a mother's womb. So why wouldn't these three kids think? Eh, it's nothing. Because we've okayed it. We've said abortion is okay. It's legal. Don't you think those kids know that that was life that those people are taking? And so if they don't care, if it's not important, if there's nothing there, then there's nothing there jogging, jogging down that street. It's just a piece of meat jogging down that street. So let's go blow it away. We've lost the moral compass 
of how we should live and how we should love and how we should help other people. All we want to do is destroy, destroy, destroy. Not realizing the more you destroy, the more you pollute the land. And one day, the land will literally cast you out of it. Will vomit you out of it. That's what's about to happen to America, people. You don't understand it, but it is. That's what's about to happen to other countries. The land has been so polluted, it's about to vomit people, civilizations, off of it because how people, civilization has polluted the land and the land is sick of it. Craters are opening up, sinkholes are opening up, volcanoes are coming alive. Earthquakes are happening. The land is sick of the sin and the destruction and the pollution that human beings are pouring upon it. And it's beginning to wake up and fight back. God has given it the permission. Wake up earth. Wake up land. Open your mouth up wide. And suck them in and destroy them for their sins. How they polluted you. We are doing it to ourselves. We are destroying our own self. With all the evil. With all of the junk that we are even teaching our own children. Taking away the very moral compass of society and turning it into <sighs> all I can see when I when I can see is just a, a festering sore sore boiling forth with massive injections of pus and crap from it. That's the vision I get. When you turn to from God and you turn to the world, you have just destroyed yourself. And more and more will probably happen because we as parents no longer want to take our children under our arms and raise them and teach them the ways that they should live and walk. I know this is extraordinary for Oklahoma, but this goes on all the time on the East Coast in Boston and them and on the West Coast in LA and them. They have these gangs that go out and they kill each other. Children killing children. No moral compass any longer in our schools and in our homes. We have turned it all over to the world and Satan and say, there they are. Here's our children. We had them, but we're giving them to you. Do what you want with them. Father, in the name of Yeshua, I plead the blood over this video. And I cry out help for our youth. That a revival will start once again. That a revival will start in our youth. That somehow, some way, there will be some youth rise up and become full with the Rukadesh so much that they will be begin to spread it throughout this world and that the youth will rise up and say to the parents you all you all are walking down the wrong path you need to come back to God because you have raised us wrong you have taught us wrong but God has loved us so much he has taken over our lives he's taken 
his children back, your children that you have disregarded, and he's going to take us back, and he's going to teach us the moral compass that we can live and walk in a world of peace and love and righteousness. Oh, Father, let it begin to come and rise up in our children right now in the name of Yeshua or this world. This world is becoming more of a mess because the adults have failed and let down on your word and your teaching on how to teach our children. Forgive us, Father, and save our children. I'm asking this in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. And Amen. Be blessed. Over in, and let me read the moral compass that was laid out. Let's go to Exodus chapter 20, verse 1. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And when we are saved and we get our heart to Yeshua HaMashiach, we come out of the bondage of this world. We're released from the bondage of this world. Verse 3, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. People have many gods now before them. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images or any likeness of anything that is in heaven. A mom or dad around the house or whatever constructive. No, they decided to do something destructive. Go out and kill a human being. Take it. Take a human being's life for the thrill of it. And of course, you got all these psychiatrists running around trying to figure out what was wrong with these boys that would do that. Why? Uh, what is going on with this world today? We see the injustice in a lot of things. Egypt, they're destroying each other. The country's destroying itself. Syria and Damascus and them destroying themselves. Human life is of no value anymore. Doing nothing. Being bored. Doing nothing constructive. And they see this other young man go jogging down the street in front of them, minding his own business. Nice young man from Australia. So these other three go, hmm, they get this idea, let's just go out and kill somebody. I'm bored. Let's do something, you know. Can't think of anything constructive to do, like going out and maybe mowing an elderly person's yard or you know help human life is no more than just an animal if we're bored go out and destroy somebody it's it's not important just go out and kill them and society's going why why is this happening what what's going wrong One, let me tell you what's going wrong. We've taken God out of everything. Everything. We've taken it out of school. Don't pray. Can't read the Bible. Can't, can't teach the moral compass of the scriptures anymore. Even though the Ten Commandments lays them out. Thou shall not kill. Thou shall not steal. Thou shall not commit adultery. You know, it, it, it lays it right out for us the moral compass let's go mm. well praise the lord this morning as i come to you again i know i haven't been on here a couple of days i think it's a couple of, maybe one day anyway as i was looking at the news and
about this thing that happened in Oklahoma. Where I was born, where I was raised, in Oklahoma. These three young men just sitting on a porch 